1 Chronicles chapter 21 Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Then report back to me so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over. My lord the king, are they not all my lord's subjects? Why does my lord want to do this? Why should he bring guilt on Israel? The king's word, however, overruled Joab. So Joab left and went throughout Israel and then came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In all Israel, there were one million one hundred thousand men who could handle a sword, including four hundred and seventy thousand in Judah. But Joab did not include Levi and Benjamin in the numbering, because the king's command was repulsive to him. This command was also evil in the sight of God, so he punished Israel. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. The Lord said to Gad, David's seer, Go and tell David, this is what the Lord says. I am giving you three options. Choose one of them for me to carry out against you. So Gad went to David and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Take your choice. Three years of famine, three months of being swept away before your enemies, with their swords overtaking you, or three days of the sword of the Lord, days of plague in the land, with the angel of the Lord ravaging every part of Israel. Now then, decide how I should answer the one who sent me. David said to Gad, I am in deep distress. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. But do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel, and seventy thousand men of Israel fell dead. And God sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem. But as the angel was doing so, the Lord saw it and relented concerning the disaster and said to the angel who was destroying the people, Enough, withdraw your hand. The angel of the Lord was then standing at the threshing floor of Arona, the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with a drawn sword in his hand extended over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell face down. David said to God, Was it not I who ordered the fighting men to be counted? I, the shepherd, have sinned and done wrong. These are but sheep. What have they done? Lord my God, let your hand fall on me and my family, but do not let this plague remain on your people. Then the angel of the Lord ordered Gad to tell David to go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arona the Jebusite. So David went up in obedience to the word that Gad had spoken in the name of the Lord. While Arona was threshing wheat, he turned and saw the angel. His four sons who were with him hid themselves. Then David approached, and when Arona looked and saw him, he left the threshing floor and bowed down before David with his face to the ground. David said to him, let me have the sight of your threshing floor, so that I can build an altar to the Lord, that the plague on the people may be stopped. Sell it to me at the full price. Arona said to David, Take it. Let my lord the king do whatever pleases him. Look, I will give the oxen for the burnt offerings, the threshing sledges for the wood, and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give all this. But King David replied to Arona, No. I insist on paying the full price. I will not take for the Lord what is yours or sacrifice a burnt offering that costs me nothing. So David paid Arona six hundred shekels of gold for the site. David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. He called on the Lord, and the Lord answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. Then the Lord spoke to the angel, and he put his sword back into its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Arona the Jebusite, 
he offered sacrifices there. The tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses had made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering were, at that time, on the high place at Gibeah. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, because he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. 1 Chronicles chapter 22 Then David said, The house of the Lord God is to be here, and also the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So David gave orders to assemble the foreigners residing in Israel, and from among them he appointed stone cutters to prepare dressed stones for building the house of God. He provided a large amount of iron to make nails for the doors of the gateways and for the fittings, and more bronze than could be weighed. He also provided more cedar logs than could be counted, for the Sidonians and the Tyrians have brought large numbers of them to David. David said, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord should be of great magnificence and fame and splendor in the sight of all the nations. Therefore I will make preparations for it. So David made extensive preparations before his death. Then he called for his son Solomon, and charged him to build a house for the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But this word of the Lord came to me. You have shed much blood and have fought many wars. You are not to build a house for my name, because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon, and I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. He is the one who will build a house for my name. He will be my son, and I will be his father. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with you. And may you have success and build the house of the Lord your God, as he said you would. May the Lord give you discretion and understanding when he puts you in command over Israel, so that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will have success, if you are careful to observe the decrees and laws that the Lord gave to Moses for Israel. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. I have taken great pains to provide for the temple of the Lord a hundred thousand talents of gold, a million talents of silver, quantities of bronze and iron too great to be weighed, and wood and stone, and you may add to them. You have many workers, stone cutters, masons and carpenters, as well as those skilled in every kind of work, in gold and silver, bronze and iron, craftsmen beyond number. Now begin the work, and the Lord be with you. Then David ordered all the leaders of Israel to help his son Solomon. He said to them, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has not he granted you rest on every side? For he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hands, and the land is subject to the Lord and to his people. Now devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. Begin to build the sanctuary of the Lord God so that you may bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the sacred articles belonging to God into the temple that will be built for the name of the Lord. One Chronicles chapter 23 When David was old and full of years, he made his son Solomon king over Israel. He also gathered together all the leaders of Israel, as well as the priests and Levites. The Levites, thirty years old or more, were counted, and the total number of men was thirty-eight thousand. David said, Of these, twenty-four thousand are to be in charge of the work of the temple of the Lord, and six thousand are to be officials and judges. Four thousand are to be gatekeepers, and four thousand are to praise the Lord with the musical instruments I have provided for that purpose. David separated the Levites into divisions, corresponding to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Belonging to the Gershonites, Ladan and Shimei, the sons of Ladan, Jehiel the first, Zetham and Joel, 
three in all. The sons of Shimei, Shaloma, Haziel, and Haran, three in all. These were the heads of the families of Ladan. And the sons of Shimei, Jeha, Ziza, Jeosh, and Bariah, these were the sons of Shimei, four in all. Jehath was the first, and Ziza the second. But Jeosh and Bariah did not have many sons, so they were counted as one family with one assignment. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Itza, Hebron, and Aziel, four in all. The sons of Amram, Aaron, and Moses. Aaron was set apart, he and his descendants for ever, to consecrate the most holy things, to offer sacrifices before the Lord, to minister before him, and to pronounce blessings in his name for ever. The sons of Moses, the man of God, were counted as part of the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses, Gershom and Eliezer. The descendants of Gershom, Shubael was the first. The descendants of Eliezer, Rehabiah was the first. Eliezer had no other sons, but the sons of Rehabiah were very numerous. The sons of Itzar, Shalomith was the first. The sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamiam the fourth. The sons of Aziel, Micah the first, and Ishiah the second. The sons of Merari, Malai and Meushai. The sons of Malai, Eleazar and Kish. Eleazar died without having sons, he had only daughters. Their cousins, the sons of Kish, married them. The sons of Meushai, Malai, Eda, and Jeremoth, three in all. These were the descendants of Levi by their families. The heads of families, as they were registered under their names and counted individually, that is, the workers twenty years old or more who served in the temple of the Lord. For David had said, since the Lord, the God of Israel, has granted rest to his people and has come to dwell in Jerusalem forever, the Levites no longer need to carry the tabernacle or any of the articles used in its service. According to the last instructions of David, the Levites were counted from those twenty years old or more. The duty of the Levites was to help Aaron's descendants in the service of the temple of the Lord, to be in charge of the courtyards, the side rooms, the purification of all sacred things, and the performance of other duties at the house of God. They were in charge of the bread set out on the table, the special flour for the grain offerings, the thin loaves made without yeast, the baking and the mixing, and all measurements of quantity and size. They were also to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord. They were to do the same in the evening, and whenever burnt offerings were presented to the Lord on the Sabbaths, at the new moon feasts, and at the appointed festivals. They were to serve before the Lord regularly in the proper number and in the way prescribed for them. And so the Levites carried out their responsibilities for the tent of meeting, for the holy place, and under their relatives the descendants of Aaron, for the service of the temple of the Lord. Acts Chapter 12 It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. 
and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak round you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. Oh, you're out of your mind, they told her. And when she kept insisting that it was so, they said, oh, It must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said, and then he left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. After Herod had a thorough search made for him and didn't find him, he cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him. After securing the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king, they asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, oh, This is the voice of a god, not of a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. Psalm 142 I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him I tell my trouble. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. In the path where I walk, people have hidden a snare for me. Look and see. There is no one at my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for my life. I cry to you, Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me, because of your goodness to me. Proverbs chapter 18 An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends, and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. When wickedness comes, so does contempt, and with shame comes reproach. The words of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. It is not good to be partial to the wicked, and so deprive the innocent of justice. 
The lips of fools bring them strife, and their mouths invite a beating. The mouths of fools are their undoing, and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honour. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. The human spirit can endure in times of illness, but a crushed spirit, who can bear? The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge for the ears of the wise seek it out. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right, until someone comes forward and cross-examines. Casting the lot settles disputes and keeps strong opponents apart. A brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. From the fruit of their mouth a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favour from the Lord. The poor plead for mercy, but the rich answer harshly. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother.